Well, that was a very stressful sprint race. Wasn't expecting to be sweating the whole time that was going on. If you guys don't know, I'm a McLaren fan, more so than I'm a Norris fan, but I would like for them to win both championships. So I am a bit biased on this whole thing. Normally what I would do is I would talk about every single driver, every single team, and try to break down how their race was and whether I was impressed or not with what was going on, and then look at some of the most interesting parts of the race. If I can, try to be under 30 minutes. We're not going to do that this race. We're solely going to talk about the McLarens and then Max's potential penalty. It's not decided yet. It takes me about an hour, an hour and a half to record, edit, upload, all that kind of stuff. So chances are the result will be out before this video goes live, but I won't know it until I put comments out. So let's get started. The results kind of all over the place. This race was very interesting. The only thing that I will note through aside from everybody else is that Joe Guan Yu passed both the Austin Martins to finish ahead of them from the pit lane, which is so embarrassing for Austin. But let's get started on the battle at the front. So McLaren are stupid, and this is the death by a thousand cuts that we've seen all year long. They got the Oscar and Norris switch around incorrect. That was all a big debacle. Incorrect is the wrong word. I believe Oscar deserved to win that race, but Norris wasn't able to actually put the fight to him because they waited so long to give the place back. That's partly Norris's fault, mostly McLaren's fault. They also messed up the other race where Oscar finished ahead of Norris and then they could have switched. It wasn't for first place, but they could have switched it up and I think it was for four points. So there are potentially 12 points there that they messed up previously. I think they missed out on two points here as well. What they did was waited till lap 22 to swap the cars. Happened just before a virtual safety car. They got very, very lucky. Why they waited so long is beyond me. This track has a weird yo-yo effect that's going on. And it was noted by uh, Norris at the very end of the race. He said there was a weird yo-yo effect going on. I noticed it. It's about four laps long. You get two laps where you get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And then the dirty air on the inside of the track makes you fall back. You fall back, you fall back. You get away from that dirty air on the inside of the track, but you still have DRS and there's a little bit of a suck going on there from the wind reduction from being behind a car and you get up and you get up and then you're too close. And if you're not really, really super duper fast or if the car ahead of you has DRS, then you fall back, fall back. It's a four lap yo-yo, four getting closer, two falling, uh, two getting closer, two falling back. We saw that with Leclerc and Verstappen. We saw that with Lando trying to catch Piastri and pass on pace. They're not really that much of a difference. And as long as you don't make mistakes or if everybody else has DRS, it ain't going to happen. Even if they do have DRS, it's not going to happen. So what is going on and why did they screw this up? So on lap four or five, Verstappen got very, well, started with a first. The first, nothing much happened. Uh, Verstappen tried to pass Leclerc, but because he didn't have DRS the first lap, he fell into kind of a DRS train, including the first four cars of Lando. Oscar, Max, and Charles. But at the time it was Oscar, Lando, Charles, Max. So on lap four or five, that yo-yo effect started to come about because on lap five, that's when the DRS would have been activated for four laps. And at that point, Verstappen tried to pass Leclerc but couldn't. And they ended up falling pretty far behind, about 1.2 to 1.4 seconds. And it was a perfect time on that particular lap very early in the race for the McLarens to switch positions. They were both Though Claire was so far behind that they would have been able to switch positions on the second straight very safely and they would have Lando in front and Oscar in second. And what they couldn't do and why they only got two points here, one, uh, two for Lando uh, in first and six for Verstappen in third, and they could have turned that into more, is by using Lando and Oscar to pull Leclerc with them throughout that whole lap. So on lap 18 or something is when uh, Leclerc got passed. I actually have it here. Let's take a look at it. What lap does it say? Yeah, lap, lap 18. See Max pulling the inside. Leclerc made a few mistakes and then he lost DRS. As you can see, he's 1.7 seconds behind here. They could have swapped the cars right here because he's 1.7 seconds back. I mean, again, they did it not too long after this. And Max goes around the outside, goes past. Not that big of a deal. Pretty standard kind of stuff. But if they did it on lap five, McLaren did, they could have used Lando to give Oscar DRS, use Oscar to give Leclerc DRS. We've seen Carlos Sainz do this in the past several times 
where he gives the car behind him DRS, and that saves him from fighting the car behind that person who might be actually faster and able to pass him. So they could have used Lando and Oscar to give Charles DRS and save him from Max, making a DRS train and causing Max to come into fourth. Fourth place, that's three points. Now, Perez got the fastest lap because he was allowed to. If you go and look at the times, he did 1, 11, 6, 7, 8. Perez has a not very good car. It's worse than Max's. We know that. Perez also isn't a very good driver. I would argue he's probably worse than Lando Norris. Uh, you see Norris's fastest lap, 111, 917. And Oscar had the fastest lap until pretty much the very last lap. So if they had had Lando in front, he would have been, one, not destroying his tires in dirty air. Two, lap 22 during the VSC, all you had to do was let Lando save up all his energy and use his mostly undestroyed tires for a pretty much whole race with him in front, having him passed at lap five, to do the fastest lap. There's your four points rather than two. And this is this thousand cuts that McLaren is dying of. And I think I was right when I called it many, 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 many weeks ago that McLaren has forgotten how to win a championship and how important all these little itty bitty points are throughout a season. Does it matter at the time? No. Does it matter here? Yes. Everybody was always upset, upset at 2021 when the FIA made a terrible decision to let half the field through and made Lewis Hamilton lose his eighth world championship. Did Max take it from him? No. Max won. He did everything right. He did everything he needed to do. The FIA fucked up and took it away from Hamilton. That was a screw up. It was different to what they'd done at any other point in history. But what they don't realize is that Lewis lost that race uh, lost that championship when he left Break Magic on at Baku. Did it happen the last race? Did it make him not have enough points? If he hadn't have done that, he would have been 25 points ahead. Many, many points ahead, where it wouldn't have mattered if, if the FIA made a screw up. He messed it up back there. Same as this. If Lando loses by two points, it's McLaren's fault for this, or for Hungary, or for come to the other places where they messed up and could have easily given Norris more points by only taking away from their other driver, who is not going to win the championship anyway, and isn't in a fight for any sort of championship position, only his first race of the year, or his first win of the year. So I think McLaren are kind of a bunch of idiots, and I don't think that Norris deserves to win the championship, nor do they deserve to win the Constructors' Championship, although they did take a haul of points away from both Red Bull and Ferrari this race, so that was good. I like Hinch on Formula One summed it up perfectly. Was the result what they wanted? Yes. Did it go to plan? No, because <laughs> they didn't follow their plan. Okay, second part of this video is Chris Medlin reporting that safety car infringement. That's what's going on with uh, with uh, Max. And if we look at the uh, document, I think it's this one. Yes, it's that one. Where's the other document that I had that I wanted to bring up? Director's notes. Let's go down and look at this. Okay, so document. Alleged breach of Article 565 of the FIA read it, failing to stay above the minimum time set for the VC ending at 1131. Okay, so that has a little bit of a description. So let us look at this thing here. So this is when the VSC ended. So I didn't really know. I just brought this up. I didn't really know what they were investigating them for. It's good to see that document. Now we know it's for Delta time rather than this. But we wanted to take a look at this and it was kind of uh, unknown. Lots of people saying, hey, he's alongside. You're not allowed to do that. You can't be alongside. You see a VSC here. You can see Max Verstappen alongside. And let's go look at this document. This document right here. I don't know why I still have this open. We'll leave it down here. This document right here is a Max Verstappen rule. 5515 says you cannot be in front of or alongside during any of the safety car uh, things. So you see safety car returns to the pits. You aren't allowed to do these two things. You gotta be like this. This is where Max was at this point, but we keep in mind it is for safety car only, not virtual safety car. During this, what happened and why is he being looked at? The delta times are split into mini sectors and main sectors. There are always three main sectors, and from what I can tell, there are ten mini sectors within a main sector. If you're ever watching the race, you'll see uh, their times updating, but if you look during qualifying, you'll only see it broke into three sectors. You'll see, oh, he did a good sector one. He was purple in sector one, purple in sector two, yellow in sector three. They don't go by mini sectors. You'll see, so when they have a delta, they are how far behind they were 
During that delta, it'll detect the next mini, de uh, when the virtual safety car comes out, the next mini sector, it'll detect where they need to be. And then a screen will come up with them and they'll have to stay that far back from the car in front of them during the next sectors. But the mini sectors aren't how it's detected. You'll see often during a uh, virtual safety car, them speeding up and then slowing down a whole bunch when they get to the main sectors, that's sector one, two, and three, not many sectors, that's main sectors. That's where the delta is followed, not where it was calculated. So when they come up to those main sectors and they go fast and then slow down because they're trying to warm up their tires. Normally, that's what they do. We saw Piastri four seconds behind Norris and then he caught right up to him and then he slowed back down to the 0.8 he was behind. And then when they restart, because not all the cars are on the same part of the track at the same time, they might not be at a main sector when that virtual safety car ends. Which means that if you're clever, you can skip the person in front if they're caught napping. The way it works in WEC, what happens is when the safety car ends, the guy comes over the radio, the pip is in everybody's ear, and it's on the team radios, and it says safety car is ending in three, two, one, green, 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 safety car, uh, virtual safety car over. And they start racing. They all know it's coming. They all know it's going to happen at the exact same time. In Formula One, you'll get a warning saying virtual safety car is ending and somewhere from five to 15, maybe 10 seconds in there, the virtual safety car is ending. They don't know when. They have a pretty good idea, but they don't know exactly when. And what happened with this virtual safety car is it looks like that Max would be outside of that Delta. And what that means is that when, I don't know what they were, but Oscar was about 0.6 behind and then Max was not a long Oscar. He was about 0.4 beh uh, seconds behind when the virtual safety car in. He wasn't fighting him for position. It looks as though Piastri's Delta was correct on this start, but Max was too far ahead because he was trying to cheat. And he wasn't trying to cheat. It, it, it's, that's the wrong word. He was trying to one up and cheat the system rather because you can cheat the system. If the virtual safety car ends and you predict it's going to end, you can be ahead of where your actual delta was because keep in mind it only detects it at the end of the main sectors, not the mini sectors. So you can get ahead of that delta. But if you do it in a way that it alarms anybody, they could technically go back and look at it. And the biggest thing where you can get the jump on people is you catch the person in front napping because it comes up on the screen. You might not be in the right spot to see the VSE turn to a green flag. You have to look at your dash. And if you're fucking around with uh, brake bias or something on your dash, you can get caught napping with the green flag. And that can happen. And it looks as though Max is trying to be cheeky. Everybody else in the field would do exactly what he's doing right now. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I don't like the virtual safety car system in Formula One. I don't know the unknown part, uh, part of it because it means that things like this can happen. I would like to see a WEC, WEC style where they count it down. That way we all know when it's going to start. I don't know if the cars are too quick for that kind of stuff. WEC means leans less towards tenths of seconds out on the track and more towards how good are you with strategy, uh, which is why it's a, sometimes a bit less exciting. But that's what's going on here, and it looks like he is under investigation for that. What would that penalty be? I assume it would be five seconds. Where would that leave him with the track? It looks like he would be in P5. If they gave him a 10-second penalty, he would be in P6 and would lose a lot of points. Now McLaren got some positions, uh, got some points off of Verstappen. If he was down in P5 or 6, um, he would be losing more points, 4 instead of 2, which would be what I wanted them, but it could have been 6 instead of 2, or maybe only more, uh, like uh, 5, because they, they didn't get the fastest lap. But that's what's going on. It'll be very interesting. Uh, where do I have this? Max Verstappen is unbelievably fast like ridiculously fast so watch out for in qualifying that's going to be the next time we're going to be worrying about stuff i'll see you guys for that subscribe if you're new throw me a like if you got a second and i will see you guys next time